Who has seen the wind? Now, this credit sequence is going to be a bit long, so first of all, I have to read this poem, and then I'm going to um, talk about more of the, about the game, like how this game can be applied to us, and how this game is possibly an art game as well. But yes, I guess I'll try to talk about um, the general um, idea of the game. Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I. But when the trees bow down their heads, the wind is passing by. Now, the general idea of the story is, like, all throughout the game, whenever we make a mistake, we can rewind time to fix it. That is the main mechanic behind Braid, space-time rewind, so that if you mess up, you can rewind time and try again. Now this whole adventure, going through the worlds, going through worlds 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and finally to 1, we were, chas we were chasing after an evasive goal, the princess, or the atomic bomb. It's as if the worlds are like, you know, the phases of experimentation. Now, this is actually a poem by Christina Rossetti, and this is, a, this is a real poem, but here's the kicker. You may notice how it's almost as if this poem is just four lines long, because this is, this is the end, because when you read poems, the author's name is at the end of the poem. But hey, it's the name of the game. Cool. Hello, Braid. But before I... Oh yes, Braid. It is a game by Jonathan Blow. Jonathan Blow, you are a genius. <laughs> like he was the main brain behind the development of this game. He is the one who had all of this in his mind. And of course, David Homan, you know, he was behind the graphic art and, you know, the art direction of the game, which, <laughs> like Okami, is mind-blowingly beautiful. But yes, like I said, the story of Tim can be applied to any of us. Like, any of us can go through the phases where we try to chase an evasive goal. And, you know, we suffer through the consequences of not only trying to chase the goal, you know, like all of the mistakes, mistakes you can make, all of the burdens you have to go through, like the monsters and, you know, the mistakes and the traps and the puzzles. But there are also consequences in achieving the goal itself. Tim's story, he achieved the goal, but at the price of peace. Now, we can also go to the same results, same consequences of actually achieving our goals. They can be good or bad. And if, and if it is bad, it's almost as if, you know, this whole chasing the goal is an ultimate mistake. And we kind of fix mistakes. Because in reality, there is no rewind button. We cannot rewind time, reverse our mistakes. I mean, rewinding, it's only a fantasy. Maybe in your mind, but in reality, you cannot chase, you cannot rewind time. No. Um, but the important thing is, despite our mistakes, now, as I said before, this game is available on the PC, Xbox Live Arcade, and the PlayStation Network, hence the whole credit to the XBLA, even though this is on my computer, since I got it from Steam. But yes, anybody can learn from their mistakes and experiences, because despite the consequences of a mistake, anybody can always get back up onto their, onto their feet if they're willing to learn from their mistake, if they're willing to learn that they're not perfect, that they cannot achieve everything, but they can always learn from their mistakes and try to become better themselves, despite the consequences of, the consequences of, of what has already been done. That is what makes us human beings. We can learn from mistakes. Yeah. So, this is kind of why I consider Braid to be an art game. It is a game, you know, at first glance it is a puzzle platformer game, possibly one with no challenge because, you know, you see that you, you, know, you cannot die because you have the rewind button, but you have to go through puzzles which are kind of mind blowing and you actually need to think in order to find out how to do the puzzles. But, at the same time, the gameplay itself, almost everything in this game actually tells you the story. Because as you see, the story of Tim 
is told through the game itself. And the story of the game is something that actually makes you think that, you know, it's not something that you would, you know, consider to be mindless as someone like, you know, was it, okay, someone like Roger Ebert, that's his name, right, Roger Ebert, not Robert Ebert, as I've said before, but yes, that's what something like, you know, you know, Ebert, you know, kind of said, you know, video games are accused, accused of being mindless, being malleable, not, you know, encouraging higher planes of thought, but in my opinion, Braid is something that can, once you actually get to this, you know, this part of the game, it's at this point when you realize there are more levels of the story than we thought there was. Because at first glance, it's about, you know, Tim trying to chase the princess down, but at the same time, there's an entire story of the atomic bomb behind this. And there's a general story, like our story, because our story to, um, our story of chasing our goals, trying to get them, get the goals, you know, achieve the goals, and mistakes, what we do from our, you know, how we go through our mistakes. Now, as I said before, the music in this game is not actually composed for the game, it was actually licensed. So it was already composed, but, you know, it was used in this game, like, Jami Sieber, or Yami Sieber, how, however you pronounce his name. A lot of his um, songs are in this game, like, sorry, like, the song that plays in the overworld, or here, this is Mainam, Mainam, have you said, Long Past Gone and Top by Heart are kind of similar, but Top by Heart is, Long Past Gone is a more jazzy one, but, okay, yeah, all these songs are very good, very good, in fact, the entire soundtrack to this game is extremely good, like, it is so beautiful, like downstream. That song is what made me excited to play this game, because it's so beautiful. But yes, I mean like art, this game is very beautiful. Not just like, you know, in terms of art and music, but like, you know, or the art direction, but like, in terms of a story, its gameplay, how everything, everything melds together. Like, even the music, you know, plays a part in this, you know, story of the game. Because it not only like, you know, sets you in the right mood for the, with, Respect, with respect to the environment, but the music, the music was chosen so that there would actually be some, you know, sounds that would actually make sense when you rewind time or reverse time, because, you know, this music is like, you know, it can be like, you know, I guess, I would say malleable, but it kind of goes against, you know, Roger Ebert's, you know, argument that art can be malleable, but art can be malleable, can't it? I mean... What is art? What do you think art is? But yes, um, what was I talk talking about before? Like, oh yeah, Braid as an art game. Like, it, this game promotes thought. Thought that you would not be able to, I guess, achieve through games like, I guess, Modern Warfare, for example. It's a different type of game. I mean, this is why we can call it like an art game. One that promotes thought, the one that makes us think about what we are as human beings it makes us wonder for a second. But yes, I mean, there's so much more I could add to it, or so much more that I've said. I mean, there's so much that I've said that you might disagree with, and that's okay because what I'm saying is not completely correct. Because despite the popularity of the interpretation of the atomic bomb, it's not necessarily the right story because you know. Jonathan Blow would never... Jonathan Blow never revealed the nature of the game itself. But it can be interpreted in many ways. And like I said, there's a general story behind Braid. Chasing our goals, the consequences, and the mistakes. And learning. Learning through our mistakes. Yes. So... This is why I really love this game. This is why I really wanted to LP this game. Well, I was so excited to play this game because I wanted to share this with you because I believe it's truly beautiful. I mean, yes it is. So that's my thoughts about the game. Now about my future with LP. I don't think I'll... I'll continue with Master Quest for sure, for sure. But what I'm saying is I don't think I'll continue the whole format with main LP and side LP because I think that, you know, that might take... That's a bit... Do you know how much work it took for me to balance Master Quest and Braid? Like around this time in the school year, like I'm in college right now, so it's like, you know, like, 
you know, bidding a bit tough on me right now, so... And it's kind of the time of the, your college career when you have to actually think about your future, when you have to prepare for your future. So, I'm going to focus mostly on Master Quest now. Focus on one game. You know, that'll be less stressful for, stressful for me. However, I may or may not start my... So I have another... I know what game I'm going to play after Master Quest. Ocarina of Time Master Quest. But I may start LPing that game along with Master Quest. Whenever I'm kind of getting bored with Master Quest, I'll start a new game alongside with it. You may be wondering what the new game is. Well, it's actually, you know, on my channel, or like the hint is on my channel. The one that says, Virtue, Sorrow, Dilemma, Indulgence, Devotion, Despair, Arrogance, and Solitude. For those of you who have played the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't deny it. You know what game that is. But if you don't know, don't worry, you'll find out. But if you do know, don't spoil it for other other people. But yes, I do plan to play that game. But I think we're at the end of the credits credit sequence. So, I just hope it is. Because the credit sequence is pretty slow and long. Very slow and long. But I think this may be the last part of the credits. So yes. Um, this has been Braid. Let's play Braid. I personally enjoyed Let's Play this game very much. Like, I know... I know that a lot of you didn't really see this as an exciting game to, I guess, watch. Considering, like, the view counts, you know, you know? <laughs> but still, I really enjoyed playing this game. Like, this is one game from, I guess, this age of gaming. Like, in the late 20th first... Like, in the late 2000s. This is pretty much my favorite game from the late 2000s. Mostly because I don't... I haven't really picked up a lot of games in this era, like... I have a Wii, but I've the only games I've had from my Wii are um, Super Mario Galaxy, which I never beat, Brawl, of course, Wii Sports. I did pick up a Kami, but I bought it later on. I tried to play it, but I also played Twilight Princess, but it's not my copy. But yeah, as you can see, I'm not really that big in games these days or buying new games. I mean, I might buy Skyward Sword later on. I played Ocarina of Time 3D, of course, but yeah, of all the games that I've played in this era of my life. Like, in the late era, I guess, of video gaming. Braid has been possibly my favorite. Yeah. So, I think this may be the end. I hope. Come on. This video's gonna be hella long! Do you know how long it'll take me to upload this video? Oh. Oh, look at this. The wind is passing through. But when the leaves hang trembling, neither I nor you. Who? Has seen the wind. <laughs> What's beautiful is that this is a poem by Rossetti, but the two stanzas are presented in reverse order. This is the first stanza. The one at the beginning of the credit sequence was the second stanza, further reinforcing the whole idea that everything is in reverse, or t the time flow is not what it seems. That everything is not what it seems. But yes. I think the credit sequence is almost done. I mean, I wish it'd be done soon because, oh my god, how long is this episode? How long is this video? Ugh. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not gonna split this up. I need to present it in one huge ass video if it has to be huge. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, I want to thank N Nintendo Capri Sun, Splitable Infinitive, or Amanda, and Super Genius for their help in um, the voice acting and reading in the previous video. Like it means a lot to me that all of them could help out. I also wanted to give out a thank to a thanks to Tapao Ye. Yeah? yeah, because she originally wanted to help out too, but given how she is busy and kind of in a rough time of her life, um, I decided that you know, like I didn't I didn't want to stress her out, but I want to give her thanks anyway. So yes, I want to thank you guys too for watching. And this has been Mario Hello, and this has been Let's Play Braid. And it has been an honor for me to LP this game. No. No, I'm not going to speed run this game, okay? You can try it yourself, but I'm not going to do it. So. This has been Maya Hello, signing off. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.